the fisheye effect. In today's photo tip, I'm going to take a look at the fisheye lens and point out the limitations of them, when to use them and when to leave them in your camera bag, and also ways of getting around the problems of using a fisheye lens, especially if it's the only wide lens that you own. These curious looking lenses can be great value, a great value add to your camera bag. This lens is the 18 to 15 Canon fisheye and most brands will have some sort of version of this, whether it be a fixed focal length or the zoom variety. It's definitely got a place uh, in the world, but I would refer to this more as a special lens, specialty lens rather than an everyday use sort of wide angle lens. So basically I only use this lens to shoot super wide angle action surfing or empty wave photos from the water. I mean, have a look at the curve shape of that lens. This shape translates into curved lines within your photo. Regular wide angle lenses will naturally distort your image to a degree, but the fisheye takes this to a whole new level of weirdness. So in the wrong environment, it can be a really bad choice of lens. So yes, as mentioned before, I use this, this lens when photographing wide angle up close action in the surf. The curved round nature of the barreling wave fits with the lens like a glove. I feel it works really well in highlighting the curves of the wave and gives a more impactful uh, feeling to a barrel shot rather than just a regular wide angle lens. Also because of its ultra wide field of view, you can hold the camera out uh, with an outstretched arm and know that you'll still get everything in the frame with a reasonably good composition. It's also a great lens for split level water shots and underwater wildlife. Beyond that, however, I don't use it a whole lot unless I think the scene would look better with some added curvature. I know some of you only have a fisheye lens for a wider angle option and would like to use it more than just for surf action and sports photos. So let's get some tips happening that will lessen the effects of the fisheye lens uh, if, you didn't want to be, if you didn't want it to be too apparent. So let's start with landscapes. I would normally use my linear 17 to 40 mil lens for my landscapes, but if you don't have that choice, you can use a fisheye lens and not get too much weirdness if you follow a few tips. So number one with landscapes, compose your horizon in the middle. Normally I wouldn't do this for compositional strength, but stay with me on this one. The reason I suggest this is because of that crazy curved uh, glass at the front. If you compose with more foreground and less sky, the horizon will bow badly downwards like a big old hill. If you then compose the horizon higher and include more of that foreground, then the curve of the horizon resembles a skate ramp. Either way, there's some pretty ugly looking bowing right there. Now, if I get the horizon dead in the middle, that horizon magically goes straight, no, no bowing. This is all because of the shape of that lens. So this one strong tip can get you around that problem in the camera. After that, it's the, in the post-production stage that can pull more of that distortion out. Lightroom has a really good feature that is named lens correction in the transform module of Lightroom. They have an auto feature that will try its best to balance levels, correct aspect ratio, and do perspective correction. Lightroom has hundreds of lenses lens profiles and would most likely have uh, one to match your exact lens. If not, choose a similar focal length and that'll do the job. Now this autocorrect does an okay job sometimes and sometimes it's way off the mark, but luckily you can fine tune it with these sliders to increase or decrease the adjustments that autocorrect uh, makes. Now it will still look somewhat distorted compared with what you get out of a 50mm lens but with these corrections and taking the picture with the horizon in the middle, you will get more of a regular wide angle shot without too much distortion. You can try these techniques with buildings and interiors of houses, but really you should invest in a regular wide angle lens if you're shooting anything with a lot of straight lines in it. Back before GoPros were absolutely everywhere, the fisheye lens uh, had a unique look, but now that fisheye look is a lot more prevalent. Having said that, it's still an awesome lens for high impact sports action. Just don't go, go and overuse it. Instead, leave it up your sleeve for just that odd wow factor shot and make sure you get super close to your subject, like 
almost smelling their breath for the best results. It's a fun lens and one worth your consideration if you're into any sort of uh, action sport and adventure photography where you can get nice and close to, your, in, to the action or your subject. We'd love to hear your thoughts on uh, or and experiences with the fisheye lenses. Do you like them? Do you use them? And what do you use them for? If you want to learn more about gear, camera settings, and everything else, photography, uh, especially in the surf, adventure, and travel themes, then please use one of the links below to subscribe to never miss a tutorial. Uh, I also have released a free mini course on water and surf photography that you can enroll in right now, or you can simply subscribe to this new YouTube channel to keep in touch that way. Thanks for tuning in.